Welcome back to Tackett's House of Horsepower. It's me, Steve Tackett. And uh, after the overwhelming response to the last videos, um, we're gonna do a Will It Run video. So let's do that. So if you saw the last two videos, you'll know that, thank you if you did watch them. If you didn't watch them, you, you can do that if you want, go watch them. Uh, we picked up not one, but two first gen Novas. One's a no post, and one's a post. The no post happens to have a small block in it. And I wanna see if it runs. And so do most of you who commented. If you, if you commented, thank you for that. I appreciate that. So what is it? What's wrong with it? How long has it been sitting for? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay. There's other things I got to do this weekend too. Besides see if this small block runs. I've got, uh, look at those wagons. Come on. Uh, I'm loading up the truck and trailer with stuff lots of stuff there's a uh, swap meet next weekend uh glendale community college it'll be february 4th so if you see this video before then if you want to come down there and buy something you can <laughs> but uh we're gonna be trying to clear this stuff out i got a shed full of parts uh, my garage is a disaster so i'm going through stuff i'm gonna try and get out there early and i'll probably be there all day trying to sell stuff Anyways, let's go for a walk. Okay. So here it is. The little 63 and there's the little 65. Sedan, coupe. Now, when I saw this car, it was tucked back in the corner of uh, Robin's yard under a tree with a bunch of tarps over it. And uh, it had been there a long time. So, uh, all right. So I saw that it was a 63. The way I knew it was a 63 was one, the grill and the bumper. There's no, there's no marker lights in it. So that tells you it's a two, three or a four. The grill looks like a, two, looks like a, a, a three or a four. Then I saw the hood. The hood has holes in the front. If you have holes in the front, like the bolts go in from the front, that hood's a 63 or it could be 62. So, but the grill is a three or a four. The hood is a two or a three. It's kind of narrowing it down. So, four lug. Most 64s and up are five lug. So the four lug suspension gives it away. So I'm thinking, all right, cool. Well, it's a six, it's most likely a 63. And uh, again, I hadn't even looked at it. I, I was standing 10 feet away from it. And I could tell that this is starting to look like a 63. So in my head, I was thinking, it's probably a straight six because they were all straight sixes. Twos and threes was straight sixes and a couple had a, a little four cylinder those are pretty rare i've actually only seen one with a four cylinder in it anyways so i was thinking that this is most likely a straight six so i come over and to my surprise i pop the hood and that is not a straight six <laughs> i was like wow okay looks like we got a little small block here so it's not original but somebody has put a small block in it. And the next thing I did was I looked underneath it. And I looked at the oil pan. And the oil pan is a front sump, front sump oil pan. So that's like a factory V8 Nova oil pan. And they only made those in four, five, six, and seven. 
So that oil pan is a correct V8 oil pan for a V8 Nova. So somebody, okay, that's interesting. Then I look at the heads and I noticed camel humps. And those are the tall camel hump. The design is the tall style camel hump. So that tells me the heads are a 461 or a 462 casting. Now I can't tell that for sure until I pull the valve cover, which I haven't done yet. I haven't touched it yet. I haven't done anything to this motor. So I don't, I don't even know if it turns over. This thing could be locked up for all I know. So I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. It's got camel humps. So then I, I was kind of curious when I got home earlier this week, I stuck my cell phone back there and I took a picture of the casting, the casting number. And I also took a picture of the front pad right here. Got the numbers off that. So I'll put those pictures in right here. Put those pictures in there. So some guys, you know, I mean, you can, uh, you can determine a lot from those numbers. So now, how long has this thing been sitting for? Well, the title was signed over to Rick in 2014. And Robin said that they brought the car home and they towed it back there and they stuck it in that corner and they covered it up. So it had been sitting in that spot where I found it since early 2014. So there's 10 years right there. So it wasn't running when Rick got it. So how long was it sitting when Rick got it? Who knows at that point? So this thing's been sitting for over, I'm gonna guess 10, 15, maybe pushing 20 years, who knows? So let's dig into it and see if it runs. So I ran the casting numbers and I know that it's a 327. So that's, it's a 327 with camel hump heads. I was pretty happy to hear that. So it would be really awesome if this engine runs and runs well. If it doesn't smoke, doesn't have rod knock, doesn't have blown head gaskets, anything like that. I'm probably gonna keep this engine in here. I might pull it out and, and clean it up and, and maybe reseal some gaskets and seals or anything that, that's leaking and maybe paint it. But I think I'd like to keep the 327 and I'll tell you why later. But we're gonna find out if this thing runs. And we're gonna have good luck today. You know why we're gonna have good luck today? Because I'm, I'm gonna channel I'm gonna channel the power of Derek. <laughs> he is the king of will it run. So I got my I got my lucky hat on. That tells me this thing's gonna fire up, it's gonna run, and we're gonna have no issues. Right? All right, so somebody do me a favor. Um, look up all those numbers. The casting numbers, we'll put the pictures in there, like I said. Check out those casting numbers and check out the numbers on that pad and post it in the comments what you discover because it's pretty interesting. You know, these guys can dig into these numbers and stuff and tell you exactly what it is. And so, anyways, we've got an issue. Being that this is an early 327, there's no bolt on the crankshaft. So I cannot put a ratchet on the front of the crank. So I'm gonna do the Derek thing and try to grab the fan and see if this thing turns. Cause if it doesn't turn, this is gonna be a real short video. <laughs> so let's try it. Uh oh. Uh, 
Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Wow. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. It's not turning. Let me uh let me see if I can grab the the nut on the alternator maybe and grab the belt and grab the fan and we'll just try it try it that way i don't know i'll be right back okay let's see if i grab the pulley can i turn it good lord no Okay, the belt trick isn't working. I can't get enough leverage on the pulley. So, we're not off to a good start. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'm gonna try a different trick. I'm gonna try a different method. I think if I take the bottom pulley off, what I'll do is put the bolts back in and then get a pry bar and pry on it that way. So let me pop those pulleys off. So, step one, see if the motor turns over. <laughs> we have not had any luck. Let's get this belt off. The other thing I just noticed is the, it's the correct Nova oil pan. It has the front sump oil pan on it, but it doesn't have a dipstick. <laughs> they've, they've plugged off the dipstick. So I have no idea if there's oil in it. <laughs> Water pump sounds crunchy. That's good. Okay, so what I've done now is I've removed the fan. Get that out of here. And <clears throat> the bottom pulley out of the way. And then I'll take these bolts and I'll stick them back in. Then I'll have something to pry with. Just stick these bolts back in. And then get yourself something to pry with. And then on today's episode, uh, is it locked up? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, no. This is not good. This is really not good. Oh, my God. <sighs> wow. I'm going to snap these bolts off now. <laughs> be good that's not good <laughs> oh no <laughs> we are locked up my friends oh no all right let's pull the spark plugs I guess Start dumping stuff down the cylinders. <laughs> Marble mystery oil, hopefully. Okay, spark plugs are out. Here's one, three, five, and seven. And they are really oily. That's not looking good. <laughs> Especially five and seven, they look pretty oily. So there's 
here's one three five seven and here's two four six eight and these I mean they all look about the same really not good but I don't I don't see anything like really rusty or maybe this one maybe some water got in it I don't know if it did or not because it has an air cleaner on it. I haven't even taken this off yet, so let's, let's look down the carburetor. My pile, pile of parts going. Okay. It doesn't look like anything got in it moves freely hmm well let's track down some uh, marble mystery oil and we'll start hosing down the cylinders and see if we can get this thing to turn over because uh, we're dead in the water if, if we can't get it to move I brought my helpers out. What is this, Scout? What is it? Watch them. Watch them. What is it? Okay. I need my helpers. All right, we're getting we're getting serious now. We're not playing. All right, I'm gonna use this funnel here with a tube on it. I'm gonna stuff that in the spark plug holes, and I'm gonna start dumping large amounts. Powerful mystery oil. <laughs> down, down the cylinders. Right? Then I was gonna get new spark plugs while I was at the store and I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna hold off. Because if this thing doesn't turn, then the spark plugs aren't gonna matter. So I think what I'm gonna do is just clean those up and put them back in after it rotates and it's going to rotate because i forgot i got this guy if you see my engine building videos i have a crankshaft rotationary device that i homemade so we're going to test my welding abilities and we're going to bolt that onto the harmonic balancer and see if my welds will hold up because we're going to get this and I got a pipe I can stick on the end of it too and we're going to we're going to rotate something we're going to rotate the car or we're going to rotate the engine one of, one of the two is going to rotate and then we'll stick the plugs in it actually no we'll leave the plugs out and we'll get it to crank over we'll turn it by hand a few times and then we'll stick a battery we'll steal a battery from something else probably Sarah, Sarah's car and then we'll stick a battery in it and see if I can get it to crank with my trigger. And if that goes well, then we'll put the plugs back in it and we'll move on to spark and fuel and then see what happens. But that's the plan. We're going to give it a shot. So let's, uh, let's start dumping this concoction in here and let it get to work and while that's working we'll clean some plugs okay we got the tube down in the cylinder number one let's go ahead and start dumping this in there we go that should, should do it <laughs> hopefully yeah. okay there's one okay We'll give it back. Okay. We're making a mess. That's usually good, right? Cylinder number two. Yeah, that's good.
Okay. Let's see, that's one, three, four, five. Dogs are super excited. They're like, all right, garage time in the backyard. Huh. Okay. Wow, now. Now this thing's gonna smoke up the whole neighborhood. If it does run, it's gonna make a big smoke cloud. But that's okay. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. If it just runs, I would be super happy. Now, get it in there. There we go. Get in there. I gotta figure out a dipstick too. I don't know if I have oil in the pan. That could be important. Okay. One side's done. Let me get the other side and then uh, I'll start cleaning some plugs. Well, I'm taking my funnel and I'm going cylinder by cylinder by cylinder. And I get to cylinder number six on this side and I find one of these anti-fowlers. Oh, hey. Hey. Oliver's really excited. This is an anti-fowler and it was in cylinder number six. And that's usually a bad sign. This engine probably smokes or the person who had it before us had a problem with the fouling plugs probably burning oil so I only found the one though I have two more cylinders to go I don't know it doesn't have it, it, doesn't have it. okay so there's only one but it's still not a good thing okay last cylinder Now, all eight cylinders got some Marvel Mystery all down them. I can't believe I didn't notice that anti-fowler when I, I guess it didn't come out with the plug. So by me reaching down here and trying to stick the hose in the hole, I was like, what is that? Why is that in there? And I stick my socket down there and pull it out and there it is. So, we're just going to have to go with it, I guess. All right. We'll let the Marble Mr. Oil do its magic. Hopefully, it's in there eating whatever it's got to eat. And uh, let me clean my hands up. And I'm going to put the uh, crankshaft rotationary device down here bolt that on and then I'm gonna clean some plugs okay I clean the spark plugs up a little bit they're basically brand new looks good now should we try it <laughs> what do you think Oliver I put my crankshaft rotationary device down there Get on here with a breaker bar. Of course. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not 
looking good. <laughs> it's, it's really locked up for real. Uh, let me get a pipe. We're gonna rotate something. Okay, you ready? <laughs> I'm done playing. Something has to give. Oh my lord! Ooh, it moved, it moved. Oh my god. Woo! <laughs> that thing was bending. I thought it was gonna break it. Oh, okay, it moved. It went backwards about a half an inch. Let's try and go forward. <laughs> oh, do you see it? Ooh, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> that is weird. It feels like the the chain is like catching, like the teeth of the chain or something is catching. I wonder if I just broke the timing chain. Oh no. It feels kind of weird. Look at that. See it kind of did it, did it, did it, did it. Like that. That's weird. Um, I guess I could pop the cap and see if the distributor's turning. <laughs> <laughs> because I might have just snapped the timing chain. <laughs> oh no. Let's take this off. That would really, really suck. All right, sweet. The distributor's moving. I don't know why it feels like that though. It's like the teeth are catching on something. I don't know. That's really weird. Let me uh, let me get the ratchet on here. Let's see if I can go all the way around. Whew. It moved. It moved, huh? Oliver's excited. All right. I hear valve springs popping. You know what? I can turn it pretty easy, actually. feel it making that that funny herky jerky movement anymore that's good <laughs> that is I don't know how much that took but I had I had about that much leverage on it <laughs> I had the pipe on there about there so that's how much leverage I had on it. And I was really pushing. I thought for sure it was gonna snap my breaker bar or my weld. Cause that's just a socket welded on there. I was a little, <laughs> I use it for turning crankshafts when I'm building engines, you know. I don't use it for this type of, uh, <laughs> it's not really rated for this type of torque. Well, we're in business now. We are in business now. I can turn it around and around now. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're spinning free now for sure. Okay. Well, I guess I need to go steal a battery. 
We'll hook up our dual red cables, because that's good. Derek would approve, I'm sure. We'll try not to burn the thing down. And uh, we'll move on to uh, cranking it with the starter. If I can get it to crank with the starter, then I'll put the plugs back in it. Wow, okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hook this battery up. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is, because I don't know the condition of the wiring under the dash and everything, and I don't have keys to this thing. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this wire, take this wire off, and just hook up the main battery cable to the starter. I don't want to power this up. This wire powers up the horn relay, and the horn relay powers up the main harness, which powers up the fuse box, which powers up the ignition switch, and on and on and on. I don't want to do that. What we're going to do is, we're just going to put power to the starter, and we're going to put a jumper wire to the coil for spark for now. And so I'm going to cut, cut that wire, hook up these cables, and go from there. Uh-oh. What would Derek do? <laughs> That's what Derek would do. <laughs> okay, I just noticed a few things. So, I reached down to the starter solenoid and I was going to go hook up my trigger and I reached down and it turns out this red wire is connected to the little terminal, the little terminal closest to the block. So this is my signal right here. That's my crank right now. So then I look at this green wire and it's it's connected to the coil already. Then I go ahead and look at this cap closer and I'm like, wait a minute, those points look brand new. Look in there. Huh. Somebody's been down this road. Now the, the plot thickens. What's going on here? Does somebody Has somebody already tried this before? Because these wires were already here. I didn't hook these up. Hmm, I guess we're here, so we might as well try it, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe Rick got it running once upon a time. I don't know. Robin said this car never ran or drove or anything. They, they pushed it in the backyard and it sat there and the title was signed in 2014, like I said. So I'm assuming this thing has been sitting for at least 10 years and you saw the engine was locked up. Like I was literally bending that bar to get this thing to turn. So how long has it been sitting for? We don't know. Has somebody tried to fire it up already? We don't know. I don't know. But I guess we should uh, see if it cranks. Let's, let's just, one thing at a time, see if it cranks with the starter. Then we'll see if we got spark. Then we'll put some fuel down it. I should probably put some water in it. It looks like it's bone dry. So, I'll hook my hose back up and stuff. We'll put some water in it. Maybe throw the belt back on it too. Probably should do that. Just just in case it runs, I don't want it to overheat or anything. So, wow. I'm really starting to wonder what's going on here. But I guess we'll find out. So if I'm right, then I should be able to put power to this red wire and my starter should crank. So let's try that. 
I'll ignore the green wire for now. I just want to try to see if the starter will crank. Here we go. One, two, three. Nothing. Hmm. Maybe my trigger's no good. I think my trigger's no good. Well, time out. All right, let's try this again. This time we'll just use a wire. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, I almost set that down. That would have been fun. So my little crank trigger is no good. That's great. But the starter is working, so that's good. So let's move on to a uh, spark, I guess. So I put the I put the spark plugs back in it and tighten them down, tighten them down. And then while I was back there, I found somebody had this in the block and they had this sticking out of that which would do nothing for two reasons one on uh, Nova's like I said earlier the sump on a stock pan the sump is in the front so a dipstick tube in the back isn't going to do you any good so if you look down here all the way down there somebody stuck a bolt <laughs> great in here awesome so anyways that's where a Nova dipstick is supposed to be but I think I got it covered I'll show you so I picked up this little engine and this is a correct Nova 283 I know most of you probably don't care but to a Nova guy this is pretty cool because not only does it come with all the Nova stuff, specific Nova stuff, like the front sump oil pan, but this engine, I need this dipstick. I just ripped my pants. That's great. Anyways, I need, I need this dipstick out of here so we can check the oil. Well, just give it to me. So we got a dipstick. Looks like it had oil in it. And what's cool about this engine is it has a recessed oil filter. So this is a 194 casting 283. So this is a correct Nova recessed oil filter 283. They're pretty rare. In my literally I have shorts on now. <laughs> great so I'll throw that in so I can check the oil and uh, we'll keep moving right along I think we can check for spark and uh, yeah throw some fuel down it but anyways I thought that was pretty cool some people out there might think it's cool okay I stuck that dipstick down in there let's see if we got any oil Oh yeah, right to the full. It don't look bad, really. It's pretty clean. That's not bad. Oh, Nothing gets by Oliver. It's actually a little over full. That's okay, we'll leave it. Okay. All right. 
I want to put the pulley on, the belt on, the hose on. I got to put the spark plug wires on. And then I got to figure out a fuel situation. And then we're going to give it a shot here. All right, here we go. Spark plug wires are hooked back up. I double check fire in order. 1843-6572. Um, belts, pulleys back on. I got to put some water in the radiator. I disconnected the fuel line from the fuel pump from the tank. So I'm going to take a gamble and hope that the fuel pump is still good. If it is, I'm going to try and rig up a fuel line to a gas can here or a water bottle or something and just try and run the, the pump, the, the pickup to the pump out of that. Cause I don't know what's in the tank, so I don't trust it. So we'll try and get some fuel up to the carb and then we're about ready to give it a try. All right, we're getting close now. I'm gonna go ahead and stick some water in there. I guess it wasn't that empty. All right. Okay. Put my cat back on. I'm gonna rig up a fuel tank somewhere. I wanna put a little bit into the bowl. Get the bowl. So I want it to run for at least a little bit. a minute maybe it'll suck fuel up out of this tank okay we got a tank right here fuel lines hooked up to the fuel pump Put a little bit down the carb. Let me just get my uh, ignition hooked up and we'll hit it and see what happens. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth. <laughs> Let's just see if it'll even make a pop sound, backfire, anything. I'll take anything at this point. So, hook up my ignition. Ignition is on fire in the hole <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was awesome that's that was way better than i expected okay all right now if we can get fuel to the bowl i think she's ready to run that was way too easy oh my god Put a little bit more in here. See if it'll run for at least a minute. I don't see any fuel yet. Come on. Come on. I know you want to. It's going to smoke bad. All that, uh, all that, uh, Marvel mystery oil. I don't, I don't think I have an accelerator pump. It don't look like it. Let's try it again.
Huh. I don't see fuel yet. I'm guessing that fuel pump is probably not going to be any good. Well, let's try it again. I'd be shocked if that if the fuel pump is good. I'd be shocked. Usually the diaphragms in the pump. They dry out and then that's it, you know. Whoa, where's fuel and fuel? Okay, we got fuel. <laughs> the needle's stuck though. <laughs> Did you see it? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Now we gotta unstick the needle. As I was just saying, the fuel pump's probably no good. Here it is, it takes off. Now we're probably flooded. I hope that needle unsticks. Okay. accelerator pump that would be great that's a negative negative on the uh, accelerator pump let's try it again Here, uh, lifter's ticking too, so we gotta get the fuel, the oil pr pressure up. I think most of the fuel is on top of the carburetor, <laughs> not actually in it. The lifter tick is going away, I think. But I don't have accelerator pump. I don't got it. see any fuel again hmm all right let's keep trying that was that was straight down this carburetor wants to I know she does she's acting like we got no fuel let me pop that fuel line off and see if we're actually getting fuel or not 
All right, so I verified when I took this hose clamp off, that sucker had pressure. So now the fuel pump is for sure working. A minute ago, the needle was stuck open. Now I think it's stuck shut because I'm getting pressure to here, but I'm not filling up the bowl. So now I think the needle is stuck closed. So I'm gonna give it a couple more tries and see if it'll unstick. If not, I might have another carburetor or we might have to take the top of this one off and try to clean that needle out. But it's, it's getting closer, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think this needle is stuck, stuck. I've tried it a few more times. It'll run for a minute, but it's like the, the fuel's not getting into the bowl. And it runs out of fuel. So, I think we're fighting carburetor issues now. But it's it, at least running, which is better than it was doing this morning. <laughs> So there is a filter behind here. You pop this guy out. It is kind of dirty in here. I don't know, can you see that? Pretty dirty. So let me flush it out, but the filter looked okay. It's not clogged. So that's not the problem. I'm guessing that needle stuck. So let me try this first, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have to pull the top of that carburetor off or go see if I have another one. All right. So what I got here is this is the carburetor that was on Oki. And I, in the video on my channel, if you scroll back, the Oki gets two extra barrels or whatever. <laughs> that video. See, it's under pressure. That thing's under pressure. So the fuel pump's good. And we're getting fuel to here. It's just not going anywhere else. So, it, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely the carburetor. And I don't want to waste a bunch of time trying to fix this carburetor. If I've got one on the shelf, that'll work, you know. And it ran, it was on, two, it was on the 283 in Oki. So, it ran, it just didn't run that great. So it's okay. So let me, uh, let me get this carburetor off and we'll give this one a try. It should be better than it was. It should, <laughs> if I need the engine, I need to get this thing at least to idle and run long enough to get oil pressure I want to see the oil pressure come up I want to see if um, the valve ticking noises go away you know so I want to give this carburetor a try I know it, I know it'll at least run and idle so we'll do that now I'm really happy that this 327 seems like it's running it, it might be okay and that that makes me pretty happy because this car this car is kind of like a trip down memory lane for me when i was in high school i started taking auto shop classes at, at my high school and and uh we had a pretty badass auto shop program and we had a full machine shop we had everything, lifts and alignment racks, bare alignment racks. We had, we could do everything at my high school auto shop. You could do everything. You could bore a block, hone a block. You could do surfacing. You could do three angle valve jobs. You could do guides and liners. You could do hardened seats, um, valves, valve stems. You could do everything at my high school. And so, uh, 
that's where I really got my start was there and uh, anyway when I was in high school I was taking those classes and I was learning pretty fast and uh, <clears throat> I got my first job when I was in ninth grade I was 14 years old and I started working at a place called Total Automotive Total Automotive and Engine Repair in Santee and uh, the owner of that place was a guy named Alan Parker and Alan Parker is like he's like a Nova he's like a Nova God he was like the first guy that I know of that was like purchasing Novas he would drive around the country and purchase Novas and he would disassemble them and he would sell them parts you know trim pieces glass fenders whatever you needed he had it and he would sell it you know nationwide and uh, he was on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine he built a 66 convertible. There's no such thing as a 66 convertible, but he made one. He made one by cutting up a 63 and he he did basically drilled out all the spot welds on a on the floor pan of a convertible 63. And he set a 66 body on top of it and made it made a 66 convertible so I mean the guy was awesome anyways he was my boss and uh, I was working there I was 14 15 14 going on 15 and uh, I, I fell in love with all these Novas and he had a, a 65 super sport and it was a straight six, but it was a super sport. And I saw it there and, and I wanted it. And so I asked him, hey, Alan, would you sell me that? And he said, no, it's a parts car. And I said, no, well, how much? You know, I, I really want to buy it. And I talk him into it. He said $750. And so I worked there and I kept my little timesheet, my little handwritten timesheet. And at the end of the week, I didn't turn it in. I just kept going until I had $750 on that timesheet. And then instead of going to the manager, I went to, uh, my manager was a guy named Eddie. And uh, instead I went to Alan Parker and I said, hey, you remember when you said $750 for that Nova? Well, I got, $750 on my time card here and he was like no nah, I told you it's a parts car and I was like no you you said you'd sell it so I I forced him to sell it to me and I that was how I got my first Nova and um, it was a 65 SS like I said with a straight six in it of course I took it to school and pulled that out and my buddies helped me um, I built a, a 327. So I had a flat top piston 327 with um, 041 heads, which is basically a the same size head as a Fuelie, which is basically the, the, these heads here. <clears throat> but 041s have the same, they flow the same, the, the ports and valves and stuff are the same, 64 CC chambers the same. But uh, the only difference is they have a small triangle in the front and they have accessory bolt holes so you can you can uh it's a little easier to put brackets and stuff on but so basically anyways it's a i had a 327 flat top pistons 041 heads basically the same as a fuelie and uh it had uh iski mega 272 cam it had i did all this at school too i built all this at school and 
got it running. Uh, it had a uh, Turbo 350 tranny. Oh It had a Turbo 350 tranny with like a 2800 stall. And literally I thought I was the, I was on top of the world. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So here we are with a, a, a no post coupe with a 327 in it with fuely heads on it. So. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but I kind of sort of want to freshen this motor up. You know what I mean? Hopefully it's a good motor. Maybe I can do a cam swap on it and uh, obviously get rid of the two barrel and, and put a single plane on it, put some headers on it and put an HEI distributor on it. That's what I had. I had an HEI, obviously get rid of the points. And I mean, if I had a, a little Holly on here with some headers and a aftermarket intake, a HEI distributor, and like a 270 duration cam, this would literally be what I drove in high school. <laughs> so uh, I think it would be really cool, you know? So anyway, let me get these fuel lines on and then uh, we'll try it again. All right, let's give this one a try. See how it does. Like I said, I just need it to run long enough to see if the oil pressure comes up good and hopefully it doesn't smoke too bad. And I don't know, see if we get the valve ticking noises to go away. And you know, all right, fire in the hole. Uh, do we have fuel? I think so. Accelerator pump in this carburetor always looked kind of weak. Oh, oh yeah. But it doesn't appear to be hooked up.
quieter. Oh yeah, we found this. We found the smoke. <laughs> Coming out over here. There we go. running. Kinda. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have a mosquito problem. Yeah, it seems like it's smoking worse. <laughs> worse and worse. I don't hear any rod knock though, and the valve's not quiet. than we were this morning at least. <laughs> uh, I hope most of that is Marble Mr. Oil. It's coming off of the manifolds and stuff where I I dump that stuff everywhere. But it runs. It sounds okay. I think it's I think it I think it has an intake leak because I can feel, I can feel like exhaust coming out where the exhaust crossover is. I can feel it like doop, 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 coming off the sides of the carburetor. So it could have a, a bad gasket right there. I don't know, but yeah, I think it runs. It runs okay ish. <laughs> now we gotta figure out what to do next well there it is did you see it it's a running ish 327 so what do we do to it I think that car needs to come in the garage 
we need to switch out the suspension and, and brakes to we have to five lug it so the rear end's got to go the front suspension's got to go put five lug on it i got all the stock stuff to make it a stock five lug suspension i can do that I think the 327, I don't know. Maybe I need to run it some more and see if the smoking clears up. If not, maybe we need to pull the heads and check the check to see what the valve guides look like. Maybe valve stem seals. I don't know. If it's burning oil, then it's we need to, we need to dig into it a little bit. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of partial to it because it's a 327. Maybe that's why I'm like come on 327 but you know if it's if it's not worth fixing then it's not worth fixing did anybody look up those numbers from earlier did you figure out what it is maybe it's a super rare expensive 327 i don't know you, somebody somebody look it up but anyways um oh i do have that saginaw four speed that i picked up from rick's house so what if we we freshen up the 327 obviously get rid of the two barrel get rid of the points um we'll put a holly on it i got a 650 double pumper over there we could do that with a four speed behind it that would be kind of cool so i don't know i don't know i'm just super happy it wasn't locked up man right? because this morning you guys didn't see it, but I turned the camera off after I tried a couple times. I turned the camera off and I, I really tried and I couldn't get it. And then I literally had to put that plate on there with a breaker bar, with a pipe, and it finally broke loose. I was, whew. that was, uh, that was not movie magic. That was real. <laughs> that was all real. So it was, uh good to see that thing turn over but it's not locked up maybe we could work with it i don't know what do you think let me know tell me what you think about it and uh next week i'll be at the swap meet i might film a little bit at the swap meet i don't know what we'll do because I'm, I'm not going to be home next weekend we're going to be up at the glendale swap meet i've already got a bunch of stuff on the trailer we're going to put some more stuff so if you need something, let me know. Come meet me down there. Uh, let me know. But I will be there Sunday the 4th, early. So I don't know if we'll have a full episode next week or not. So anyways, hit like, hit subscribe, hit comment, come see me, hit the bell, tell your friends. I don't know. Do do something. You know what I mean? What have you been doing all day? I, I've been working. What are, you, what are you doing? Anyway, I'm just kidding. Let me know, hit me up, and um, I'll see you next time.